Welcome to Vote Who, the brand new programme with me, Henry Bonsu. This is a show where you ask the questions the mainstream media find too hot to handle. We're live today, as we will be every day this week, during the run-up to the British general election. In this show, we're asking whether the British political system excludes ethnic minorities, or do they exclude themselves, as many people say. We've been out and about with our cameras and have recorded some questions you wanted to put to our guests. But Vote Who is also a phone-in show, and we want you to call in and challenge our guests today. The number to call is plus four four two zero eight six zero one four treble five. You can also text on plus four four seven eight double zero double zero eight zero double six, or you can send us an email at vote who at presstv.co.uk. You can then question or cross-examine our guests. With us today are Ahmed Versi, senior editor of the Muslim News, and Sukant Chandan from the Sons of Malcolm website. Sukant is also a filmmaker. But let's start off with you, Ahmed. Lots of people say that ethnic minorities are excluded by the British political system, the people at Westminster. And others say, well, actually, they've been here long enough. They exclude themselves. What do you say? Well, I think uh, it's more complex than just uh, black and white, i.e. exclude themselves and they are excluded. I mean, if you say about just over about two decades ago, yes, they were uh, excluded by the establishment. But I think uh, since um, um, the Labour government came into power in 1997, they've done a huge amount of uh, work uh, to include, be, to be more inclusive uh, of the ethnic minorities. What kind of things have, you do, have they done, do you think? So, for example, um, it was the first time that, uh, I mean, it's the Labour Party that has got uh, members of parliament. Uh, they, are, um, they are about 15 and I think two or well, three. Well, there's 13, uh, 13 Labour, Labour, two conservatives. Uh, conservatives and none Lib Dems, which mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't expect Lib Dems to have uh, some as well. Again, in the ha House of Lords, you have more Labour than, uh, than conservative or Lib Dems. So in a way, they have started doing that. And especially for me, uh, from, the, from the Muslim perspective as well, Muslims were excluded as well before then as well, because before the... the uh, uh, Labour coming to power. So you think the main political parties have done quite a bit, especially Labour. Sukhan, do you agree with that? Well, definitely things have progressed since two decades ago, so I'd agree with my friend on the panel here. But I think there's still there's some fundamental issues that the three main parties in England are not covering. And I think those fundamental issues is uh, 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 economic policy, <coughs> which is still beholden to the neoliberal agenda. Whereas that's not the case in Scotland and Wales, where mm -hmm. you have Welsh Labour and Plaid Cymru, you have the SNP in Scotland, and in Northern Ireland you have Sinn Féin, who are all left social democratic organisations. So on, on that level, there is no option on a national level in England for, for, for minority communities. OK, so you think in Scotland and Wales, maybe they bring people in more, but in England, no, they don't. We'll examine that no, in more detail. We'll examine that in more detail a little bit later on in the programme. But for now, let's go to our first question. In every sphere of social and economic life, black people fear worse. In employment, we're four more times likely to be unemployed than, than white people. In health, in, you know, in, in financial access, in every single sphere of social and economic life, black people fear worse. I would like to ask the Prime Minister and every political party leader why it is that there is a brushing out of the issue of race and discrimination in favour of the issue of diversity or fairness, which in itself is fine, but the specific issues that black communities face are not being addressed. Why is that the case? And will they address those specifically in the future? So straight back to you, Sukant. Are the political parties then, you know, airbrushing out race, you know, in favour of diversity? I think there's a lot of hypocrisy going on. I think they're airbrushing out race and they're brushing in a whole bunch of discrimination. And, uh, you know, it's an obvious thing that's going on now in terms of the racism that's manifest. I think it's manifested mostly in the form of Islamophobia, which is connected to, obviously, British, British foreign policy. And this goes back to my point about the English uh, situation in, in relation to Wales and Scotland and Northern Ireland, whereas uh, um, all, the, all, all the three areas, apart from England, they have a progressive attitude towards foreign policy. They're, they're clear that our foreign policy creates, you know, problems for them. That so they're, I mean, they're, they're, there's a dynamic there. A clear distinction there, saying it's a bit of an English problem, actually, and that south of the border here in England, the Westminster Parliament, there is a problem. They can't deal with race and problems with foreign policy and Islamophobia head-on, despite the progress you say they've made. No, I think they have. I mean, Islamophobia, they have tackled um, 
uh, for example, in December 2003. Um, of course, it was uh, because of a directive from the European uh, Union that the, the Labour Party did uh, bring in the uh, to outlaw discrimination on religious grounds at, in the workplace, which wasn't there before. Under the Race Relations Act, you could have uh, they could out, they outlawed the race and uh, ethnicity. Um, in, in the workplace. But if you look then at the again, manifestos, quality. they don't really tackle race. They talk about fairness, a future fair for all, diversity. They don't say black, white, Asian. They tend to run away from those terms, fearing no, maybe it's I, a boat I, loser. Yeah, I do agree on that, but I'm saying they have done something. Like, they have got an equality uh, bill that came in, and now it's, it's law in, in, in law, where, again, it, uh, it, uh, it outlaws discrimination, uh, especially on religious grounds, uh, in uh, various uh, government institutions. So I think they, they, they are doing something. It's not that they are not doing a, uh, everything, but of course uh, a, a lot needs to be done. For example, as we are talking about Islamophobia, yeah, bec uh, the government did bring in incitement to religious hatred to outlaw that uh, part of it. However, it was watered down because of the oppositions from all the human rights groups in this country and from the uh, Lib, Lib Dems and the Conservative Party saying that if we have this legislation, we will, uh, it will affect freedom of expression. So it was watered down and it allowed uh, right-wing groups like the EDL and others to still continue. EDL, English Defence League, League, a little bit like yeah. the British National British Party. Like they, are, they are more right-wing than the British National Party. You have to try and uh, incite on religious grounds, you know, the Muslim community, like they go outside mosques and incite people. So because of this, uh, unfortunately, there's no legis I mean, the legislation does not cover that. But the government did try to do something. So there has been significant progress, and maybe you refuse to accept that, and perhaps you're fighting some of the battles of the past. The ground has shifted. No, these are very much current issues. <clears throat> Listen, until Westminster can come to terms with itself that its foreign policy is directly related to how Muslims, particularly young Muslims, feel angry and alienated, until they accept that, they cannot have a progressive position towards the Muslim community because they're criminalizing vast phase uh, of Muslim people who defend the right to resist in Afghanistan and Palestine and Iraq and who, who believe that these countries should be so sovereign and independent. So until they resolve this issue, on the issue of the black community as well, now I know there's an the Operation Black Vote, yep. but people in general are not stupid. They don't vote and they're disengaged and they're alienated. If they don't vote, then they're excluding themselves in one way. If they don't get involved in other areas of British life, they're also excluding themselves. And it allows indigenous white people, as they're described in this country, to say, you know what? They've been protected by the system. They've been here all this time. What more do they want, Ahmed? What more do they want? Well, I think they do uh, participate in the, in, in the uh, political process, especially if you look at, like the, uh, uh, say, the black community. They did start, uh, especially uh, that in, 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 let's say, some 20 years ago, they did uh, uh, participate in the process. But what they found was, even though they did participate, there wasn't much return from the establishment. So therefore, uh, if you look at the parliament, you know, how many black people there are, you know, one or two, two people, I mean, uh, I mean 15, uh, including the Asian uh, community. And now I think the Muslims, for example, especially the Muslim Asians, are going through the same process. Okay, They're trying well, to engage. Yeah. But again, they're finding it that uh, even though they're engaging, there it's is a... It's very, very tough indeed. We've got a caller, and this is a live program. I'm very pleased to receive your calls. Marlon from London. What would you like to say, Marlon? Yeah, uh, what, what I was going to say was, uh, if, if you think about the different... If it, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear. Do you fire away? If you think about... I mean, I, I'm <coughs> by myself off of a, uh, a you know, black, black ancestry. Um, if you think about the way the political, political system has been set up in the UK, it's it, it completely r ridiculous. You know, if you look at it, like eight hundred and fifty billion pounds was uh, bailed out to the banks. Yeah. And out of the things that out of the things that you can see, is that you can see for the majority of it, all, all the all the kind of um, all the money that was spent uh, on the black communities was something like. 0.1 percent of, of of you know. So as a result, you feel the, the black the, community the is not a priority. Yeah, yeah. So the p but poverty and unemployment in the black community is still is still the highest in the whole country. And the, the British political system, it's it's completely it's institutionally racist. And you know how many.